Wednesday, December 15th. It's still Wednesday, December 15th. Um, I tried meditating in the morning. And I, I just, I couldn't get into it at all. Couldn't get into it. I was, I was daydreaming. <laughs> I just couldn't focus. Um, a client canceled, so I had some extra time. Otherwise, it would have been a really busy, busy day. Um, I actually have a couple clients that cancels, which is nice, because it's breaking up the day nicely. Um, so, so I'm using my time wisely. The more I have planned, the more I'm like, okay, what, what do I need to do next, right? And just kind of, um, so I've been re, <laughs> I think, I think the videos that are posting, I don't know, I have to look. I think I have just started working again and I'm reviewing a lot of the types of modalities. And, you know, when you get out of college in the, one, there's, you guys already know, this was not the field that I was supposed to go into. So all of the basic, you know, practice classes and even, even my internship, I, I, I really used the bare minimum to get by, like really did. Because I wasn't gonna, I wasn't supposed to stay in this field. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to stay in this field. So I, I, I learned what I needed to do to learn to help others and then move on. Right? Ow. <laughs> um. So, I've been looking into logotherapy a lot more and and reminding myself that um. Reminding myself that, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I got distracted. Um, why am I recording? I'm recording because I came across, as I'm reviewing, I'm just reviewing, right? And some of this stuff I'm like, oh, I remember, I remember. And then other stuff, it's like new, like, or, or, or new, fresh and eye, pair of eyes. Right, you know, I'm like, oh, this seems familiar, but it really isn't. And so, <laughs> so I'm reading about level therapy, and it's about Frankel, Frank, uh, Victor Frankel, and I remember reading about him, um, not about his work, but quotes about him, and I remember being drawn to his quotes. A life quotes and, and just like oh that makes so much sense there's so much meaning in that <laughs> so I'm reading this overview and then I come across this part that says as to all forms of psychotherapy logotherapy possesses a set of underlying assumptions which cannot be conclusively proven <laughs> written by a written Rittinger 2015 so I just started laughing because I'm like that's right that's right if I remember correctly right it's all, it's all assumptions. These are all assumptions with the exception of evidence-based practices because those there's been more research and stuff done. But for the most part, a lot, a lot of um, um, psychotherapies, psychoanalysis really is, is working off of an underlying, underlying assumptions, right? And, and there's been enough to show that it helps, but nothing has been proven. So then I was just like, oh, I feel so much better now incorporating birth charts and in this element and I'm looking through the overview of, of logotherapy and it's just I'm just like wow it, it told spiritual waking written all over it <laughs> so so just like the the terminology and I'm just like okay I can check I could check my lit check that off my list of <laughs> things that I'm reviewing and that it just makes more sense and, and helping people find meaning and purpose in their life experiences regardless of how intense they are, right? Or, or how much misery exists. So I think this is what I'm going to be leaning, learning a little bit more on. And, and um, that one and ACT, um, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, have been really calling out to me a lot more. Um, yeah. And Life Review Therapy. I've been using that a lot more with, with the older adults and it's helpful. It's really helpful. Um, 
yeah, I just thought it was funny. I just wanted to share that. And that I couldn't get into my head about it. Of meditating this morning. And um, just, yeah, being proactive. Um, I'm hoping to register for classes soon. I need to take a few orientation stuff. Um, and um, yeah, that's all. Just a quick check-in on <laughs> that awareness of like, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> the title, the title for today, I think of it. I'm starting to listen to my videos again just because there's that like that aha moment for the last one where it was similar to um, Ali's Tarot like the whole storyline was kind of there so I've been listening to them a lot more to um, to see like is there again because I, I there was a while where I was just like not paying attention to it but now I, I'm, I'm wanting to and so the one that's um, <laughs> the title for today's for the one that's out for today is called Think Until You Make It. <laughs> I remember, I remember. I mean, that's what I did, right? Fake it till I made it. And in my first year internship, I was given a two year. And so at SC, they, they were really great, strategic about the 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 way the the core the program was outlined for students, and I was so grateful for it. Um, as, as difficult as those three years were, I was so grateful for the experience because it just continued to re reinforce this theme of it's difficult, but I'm pushing through it and there's light at the end of the tunnel um, with every experience that came after that. Um, and and we had, um, so I took, I did the three year program because I worked full time. And, and so the three and four year programs oftentimes were full time workers. Um, and, and diff so it was with adults, which was nice. It wasn't like this, this, I mean, we were all adults, but there's just a different feel when you are taking courses with other working adults who have additional responsibility. So there's this, 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 um, connection that is different from a student that, um, you know, does school in four years, goes to grad school, like just school, 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 school with no other life experience. It's a different feel. It's totally a different feel. And so, um, so I appreciated being in that cohort, the three-year cohort, because I knew it was going to be with other working adults, um, with other responsibilities. And, um, so we had our, our cohort and, and I was traveling even though I went to SC, I didn't go to the main campus because I was working all over the place. <laughs> I drove around everywhere, in Orange, mostly in Orange County. I was in Santa Ana um, at the time and then working for um, this program at the time. It's called Awareness Inc. where I was going into the schools, the high schools and junior highs and talking about like safe sex and all that stuff. And um, But I was working in Santa Ana as an after-school program instructor and they considered that program to be like a uh, teaching, um, what is it? Teaching camp, boot camp, because you, in essence, had, you know, some after school programs have small classes per instructor. And I used to do that when I worked um, in another after school program where it was literally there was three of us and we had maybe a total of 12 kids. So each of us had like a good four, three or four kids that we worked with. This was different. I literally had a classroom of 30 to 40 kids. Um, because at that, that was the first year they took away the, the ratio, the, the teacher, it was like 20 students for one teacher. And, and it was in a low income area. And a lot of these kids were latchkey kids. So this program was designed to hold, to house, um, or, or to kind of not babysit, but provide support for these students until their parents got home from work. Cause they, they started early and they ended, it was a year round school and they had, um, they, so they ended really early um, and, and the kids were always in school. So there was this rotation. So some, some months we had more kids <laughs> in transition than others. So that's why I'm like 30 or 40 kids at once. Um, and, and I had a whole classroom by myself. So you really had to learn um, classroom management. And then they, because it wasn't like a babysitting, it was an actual program set up. You, you, we created we we as a as a as a team all of us instructor or you know 
teachers in training um, had to come up with a curriculum for every every um, cycle and you know everything we had to cover the core subjects math science um, literature and and we had activities and then we would do things all as like the whole program why so so there was this accountability of following through with the curriculum um, and and um, and really, um, I think we even had, a, oh, do we have open house? We had something. Um, and so oftentimes we used the classrooms that were vacant because the teachers were off cycle for that month. And so, um, so yeah, it, I mean, that was a great experience. And I think I worked there for like, how long did I work there for? One, two, three. I remember the first year, like it was, I had that one student that really tested my buttons and, and I was like, like, well, what do I do with this child? She was a challenge for me. And I remember I was going to quit for that because of that one child because I didn't know if I could do it. Um, and I was being told, like, don't quit, don't quit. Think about it. Please don't quit. And then I decided to, like, push through the discomfort like I tend to do. And um, and I remember investigating and, and talking to her teachers and everyone was just like, good luck, good luck with her. And I'm just like, how can you, how can you give up on her? And I'm so pissed. I was pissed. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And I did. And, um, and at the end, like she gave me a big old hug and she's just like, I wish you were my mom. And it was just, you could tell, like there was a, I mean, I've worked my oil so <laughs> but anyways, um, totally like too many stories. Fake it till you make it. Um, so I was working there and awareness inc and <laughs> i think that was the year i had like four part-time jobs and um so so from that job i would travel it was in santa ana i would travel to costa mesa so i went to the satellite campus and um and and everything's on loans right because i didn't qualify for my financial aid but i had bills to pay and and so that's why i had to work or full-time part-time jobs which was equivalent to one full-time job but this gave me the, the different experiences and so then um so the cohort we had this really great professor and I, I really liked him one because he didn't have his license he didn't feel the need to have his license and it was very rare um for a professor to not have their license and, um, but he was so great. I mean, clinically, it was like he knew how to talk. He knew how to treat people. Like, you could just tell. And and um, we developed a great relationship with him as a team, like as a cohort. And so when we, we literally, like, um, were being authentic. I think that's what I really appreciated about that class is that we were authentic to the core and we were all acknowledging the challenges and we were like you know what at some point you just gotta f it till you make it right and so the title of the video for today is called fake it till you make it that's where i learned that from um and of course we didn't say fake it it was f it till you make it right you're, you're really needing to as you're building yourself up as you're getting the experience i mean a lot of people especially in the industry right the the um what is it being in the limelight what is that called being an actor or whatever um you hear stories about actors lying about their age um to get in there so you fake it till you make it right um until you make it and 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 then the truth comes out and and so there's this element like i was even thinking about this whole experience for me right of being completely transparent um as a person but also as a therapist like how am i utilizing my transparency in therapy um again being mindful of, of how i incorporate it when i do the self-disclosure because it's called self-disclosure um and and really this element of of um being honest that sometimes you just you you do have to effort till you make it to where it becomes this this um automatic right automatic thing um you know in in that video i'm talking about like your body posture and just doing slight changes even though you don't feel it but but just shifting shifting yourself um is is like a little ripple effect little ripple effect um 
little ripple effect. I was talking to someone about identifying positive things that they're grateful for. And they're like, yeah, I try that, but then I'm quick to turn it around. She's minimizing it, right? Minimizing um, being grateful about something as, as insignificant. And, and um, I have to, it just coincidentally, <laughs> I was listening to Abraham Hicks this morning, this morning. And Abraham Hicks, the title of this one is Just Spend the Day in Genuine Appreciation, is what it's called. It posted 12 hours ago. And so I listened to it just now. And it talks about how um, there's a difference between faking it and then being genuine about it. And then how the process of how to get there. And so uh, Abraham talks about how Esther, the vessel that he's that they're using, Esther went to the extreme of of buying all these notebooks. Or now she has uh, she has all these notebooks. But at the very beginning, there's this intention, intentionality, right? Of, of how do you how do you make it so that you get to where it's genuine? And and so Abraham tells a story about how Esther literally was writing like made the time, made the time to write, intentionally pick out what she was grateful for in that moment, and then the next moment, and then the next moment. And then, I mean, like, OCD-ish, like, so, like, and so, for example, after every activity, after she made her bed, she wrote down, I just made my bed, took 30 minutes, and then really sitting with that experience of making your bed, and, and she wrote down, like, um, I am so grateful for this warm bed, you know? And then I started thinking about it too. I was just like, you know what? When I bought my new bed, which is like a very expensive bed, I, I've never paid so much for a bed before. Again, because I never really took care of myself. Not to say that you have to get a nice bed. It was for me, it was like, I'm making a six figure income and I'm not even taking care of myself. So one of the things that I knew I struggled with was sleep. And, and so I made the choice to invest um, what I had available to me for a good bed. And, and it's been such an incredible experience for me. And, and so when I heard that, that, I was like, I am grateful for my bed. You know, like every penny of that was worth it. And it's so comfy and, and it feels like I'm sleeping on clouds. And, and, you know, and then as I was listening to this message, I had just finished making my lunch slash dinner and I was so grateful of what I was eating it was something healthy I had put it together it tastes yummy and I'm like as she's talking about as they're talking about how Esther was writing every it, like the gratefulness of that process of that experience I was also doing it in my head like this this salad is delicious like I'm so grateful for it and and then thinking about the next moment is like you know I bought myself these ice creams who has ice cream in the cold I do um, and, and it's pistachio and, and, and it's vegan. I think I, that's what I got more excited about. It was, it was vegan. And I was like looking forward to that ice cream treat. Um, vegan ice cream right before I come to my clients. Right. And, and so, so little things, right. That, um, when you get into the habit of it, after you fake it <laughs> to get to the point of being genuine about it are these little steps these little baby steps, baby steps, right? And and this this awareness that it's this moment, that sitting in it, relishing in this moment, looking for it, right? Because the, the law of attraction, what you see, what you focus on, that's what you're going to get more of. If you're constantly looking at, oh, this sucks, oh, the world is like this, oh, that's what you're going to attract. Without even realizing it, that's what you're going to attract. So anyways, I thought that was fun. Fun little exercise, and <laughs> it's just the coincidence of it. And um, yeah, that's all. Not much other than that. It's Wednesday, middle of the week, a few more days. I'll be traveling south, so excited for that. Um, but yeah, that's all. All right, bye. Hi, my name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learned to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, 
Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth. This just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt, um, t-shirt designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node. Um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is you know, great. <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and, and be vulnerable you know, with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth, we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were. And so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience it, and that you find some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just, just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and you know, we'll see what else um, comes next for me.